Businesses often use inside sales as a cheaper sales resource, working on the smaller clients or the smaller sales. Other businesses use inside sales as a way of keeping the field salespeople productive and busy. Make their appointments for them, do their admin, it's kind of a sales coordination role. I want to give you today a third reason for using inside sales. Increasing your conversion rate by 6,000%. That is 60 times. Funnel Vision is brought to you by Math Marketing, creators of the Funnel Plan. Math Marketing is the source of the one, two, three of B2B. We all work really hard on improving lead conversion rates and we do things like changing the copy in the email, A-B testing landing pages, offering more compelling lead bait. And we're happy with a 10 or a 20% improvement, often as a result of our efforts. But today we're going to talk about one small change that you can make if you haven't already that could potentially yield a 60 times improvement, that is a 6,000% improvement in your conversion rates. It's all about responding quickly. In a study published in the Harvard Business Review, two, two researchers drew on some work across over a thousand businesses and what they reported back on was how quickly businesses responded to online leads. You know, again, context specifically online leads, and it was an American study, but I believe it holds true for most countries. And what they found is that 37% of companies responded within an hour. And that's pretty good. Responding within an hour, I think, is good. And 37% of them doing it within that window, likewise, very good. At the other end of the spectrum, 23% of businesses didn't respond at all. That's possibly not a good idea. So that was one study and they really were looking there at how quickly businesses did respond. And their conclusion was businesses are not responding fast enough. Because whilst 37% is good, it's not 100%. So why aren't all businesses not responding quickly? And to dive into that second point or that question a little further, we need to look at another study by these same two researchers. And what they looked at in the other study which was across some 1 million sales leads from about 42 companies, 13 of which were B2B. What the second study looked at was the effect of responding quickly. What they found is that businesses that responded within one hour of the lead coming in, online leads, those that responded within one hour were seven times more likely to have a meaningful conversation with the buyer than those who responded somewhere between an hour and 24 hours later. So one hour versus one day, if you like. Seven times higher throughput or more, better response rate, more likely to convert that into a meaningful conversation and therefore a lead and therefore a sale. Now, comparing those companies that responded within an hour to those who responded more than a day later, the uplift was 60 times, 6,000 times. It all comes down to responding quickly. Shortly, we'll show you how to do this in Funnel Plan. But before that, we're going to do two things. Share with you our conclusions and invite you to receive other blogs like this. Let's get to the conclusion first. Well, before I get to the conclusion, why? do you get such monumental achievements or such, such great improvements in the response rate? I think it's really simple. The prospect is in the office and in the mood. An hour later, they're probably in neither of those modes. They're not in the office and they're not in the mood. There's probably a third reason as well, is that if you get them quickly, they haven't yet spoken to your competition. Pretty basic stuff, but strong, compelling argument for responding quickly. So I've got four recommendations and they won't surprise you. Firstly, respond quickly. We know that responding within an hour is much better. I'm gonna suggest that you set the target at five minutes. Make it a near immediate response. That's my first recommendation. Second recommendation is 
to make your response consistent with what the buyer is expecting. If your lead form says, enter your details to chat now, or to talk about this now, or to speak to a consultant, then it's kind of easy. I'm ringing up because I'm the consultant and I'm going to talk to you. That's very easy. But if your response form said, enter your details here to get this free, and then insert your lead bait here, then it's silly to have that same conversation. In fact, the silly conversation that we have all the time is, hi, I was just wondering how you found that report. Well, that's a silly conversation to have five minutes later because I haven't read it yet. And so we wait for a day or two or three later and then we wonder why we get such poor response rates. So ring up immediately. Hi John, thanks so much for downloading the paper. Hey, I know you haven't read it yet. Need to give you some time to do that. Would you like to make a time, maybe a few days from now, for us to have a chat, to see how you found the report and talk about its findings? When would suit? You might be able to craft that better than I just did on the fly, but you take my point. Make the response relevant given where the buyer's at when they just filled in the form. Think about the buyer's journey. Where are they up to? What are they ready for next? Recommendation number three, consider sequencing your emails so that you can respond. Now I know that some of your online leads are not generated by emails, but some are. For those that are, consider sequencing your emails or your ads, whatever the mechanism is that you're using to trigger these responses in the first place, consider sequencing them so that you can respond quickly. Don't run an ad at 10 o'clock at night if you can't ring at 10 o'clock at night, for example. Don't send your email out at 10 o'clock at night if you can't ring at 10 o'clock at night. Equally, maybe even within the day, stagger your emails so that you can afford to keep up with the calls when you get a, a, an inbound inquiry from an email that you can afford to respond quickly to it. So rather than sending them all out at a certain time in the morning, stagger them. Now I know that you've got data that says that it's better to send an email at a certain time of the morning or the afternoon for your business. Well, that's great, but I will guarantee that the improvements that you're enjoying by choosing time of day carefully fade into insignificance compared to the sort of improvements that we're talking about now. So I suggest stagger your email sends and your ads and whatever else you're doing to trigger leads so that you can respond quickly. And my fourth recommendation is hinted at by the title of today's show and that is consider inside sales as a sales resource to make those calls. If your field sales people can afford to call back really quickly, consistently do that, happy days. But for most businesses, that's not the case. So consider employing an inside sales force whose job it is to make those calls on behalf of field sales so that they can respond quickly. The improvements are worth the effort. If you enjoyed this blog, then likely you will enjoy others. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to receive this blog by visiting mathmarketing.com forward slash blog or by visiting our YouTube channel. If you have a colleague who may be interested, we would be so grateful if you invited them to subscribe. Why don't you do that now? And when you come back, we'll show you how we do that in Funnel Plan. As you know, a Funnel Plan is a great way of consolidating your go-to-market plan that sales and marketing are going to follow together. It describes the objectives, the strategy, the velocity, and the tactics that marketing and sales are going to use together to generate that rate of velocity to meet those objectives. Now let's take a look in Funnel Plan itself. The plan that we're going to take a look at today is the blogging video that I normally use. Now, I really only want to draw your attention to two things here. Let's start with the funnel velocity. Now, in this plan, we've assumed that we've got a 13-week cycle top to bottom. We lose 50% of our leads don't become proposals, and 50% of our proposals don't become sales. Clearly, we're trying to fix this top ratio. How can we get more of our leads to get to the proposal stage? Now, in this case, the 50% is manifested as different rates of leakage at three stages between interest and gap, gap and need, need and offer. So we're really only troubled right now about the leakage between interest and gap. I'm not getting enough of my prospects to the gap acknowledge stage and it's probably because I'm not even getting to have a conversation with them. 
and that's the one that we can fix. So take a look at this. In order to get our 140 sales in this plans example, we need 753 prospects. So if we've got 753 prospects, we're really only looking to make an improvement in this one stage that is between interest and gap. That's currently sitting at 21%. If we can make an improvement to get that down only from, so let's say 21% to get the leakage down to 10%, that's only a 50% improvement. And yet I've just mounted an argument that you can get up to a 6,000% improvement. It's small beer. To make that one small improvement, let's go down to the tactics, take a look at the actual tactics in use, and you'll see in the tactics that there are, there's a follow-up tactic in here already. That's pretty normal in any plan that after a lead is generated, we're going to follow it up. So let's take a look at the actual tactic we want to change. So we're going to go through into the second page because the tactic that we want is an interest established, which comes after positioning. So here's interest established, and we've got follow-up call, gap acknowledged. It's as simple as this. We're simply going to have the follow-up call within five minutes using inside sales. Now, I know that that was a long wait for a ridiculously simple change, but I wanted to make the point that the tactic is a ridiculously simple change. Making it in the plan is not difficult. Making it in your business, obviously a little more difficult, but well worth the effort. In next week's show, I want to review a book by Jeffrey Moore called Escape Velocity. Until then, may your funnel be full and always flowing.